It's summer vacation. We shouldn't be having school. What's this about? Ugh. Well, I guess it is what it is. I hear ya, I hear ya. Stop the summer vacation music. Stop the summer vacation music. Okay, okay. Loud and clear, loud and clear. All right, so if we're going to do this class then on this really cool machine from my personal collection which you can see is, is even uh, uh, labeled with uh, design for school use no I didn't steal it from a school but I did procure it from an administrator in a school that used it back in the day and he was the original one that had it so I think that's kind of neat and this is one made by Ricker now some of you may not even know that name. I don't think we've ever had a Ricker on this channel before. And if any of you want to send me nasty notes about I'm pronouncing it wrong, like Rickar or something like that, go for it. Because, you know, whether it's Fof or Faf or whether it's Necky or Nietzsche or whatever, this is just a really awesome sewing machine. It really is phenomenal. And if you don't know much about the Ricker, sewing machine company history. Let me tell you a little bit about it. So the Ricker Company was founded on September 16th, 1939. Originally under the name of Nippon Shokusen Kagyo, then Rikagu Kagyo. Uh, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but my Japanese is like Konnichiwa Okengi Deska. But you know what? That's a Japanese-based company is how Ricker found its roots, basically. So in May of 1948, it began to manufacture sewing machines in Takakawa, Tokyo, and initiated sales by way of subscription and installments. This way of selling was an utterly new concept in the sewing machine industry in Japan, to use subscriptions and installments. Now, Singer had been doing it similar things to that for quite a while. So, you know, and oftentimes we are following behind our uh, Japanese and our Chinese brothers and sisters in business. In this case, we actually had a little bit of a step up on them as they started to do this in 1948. So the company name was changed then in September of 1949 to Ricker Sewing Machine Company Limited. From that time, Ricker continued to do its best to expand its production facilities and improve manufacturing techniques and in November 1960 received the prize of the Director General of the Agency of Industrial Science and Technology boy is that a mouthful for its modern factory layout and in September of 1965 it also received the prize of the Ministry of International Trade and Industry through the Agency of Industrial Science and Technology these are pretty high accolades and really, really do say a lot about how progressive the Ricker Company was and continues to be long into the latter part of the 1900s and going into even the 2000s. So in the field of research and development, this company continued to be progressive. And in March of 1963, Ricker received the Okachi Memorial Technology, te Technological Prize for the first time in the sewing machine industry. So they received a lot of awards, a lot of accolades for their designs. And if you've seen the pictures I put up on Facebook, you're going to see that these machines, while they're portable, they are built like a tank. Uh, they really are real rugged machines. They're all steel on the innards. Uh, their shell has plastic on them, but I'll tell you one thing, they are just built 
to last. They really are. The Japanese took the design and the quality as evidenced by these accolades they received by independent uh, evaluators of their, uh, you know, their everything from their facilities to their their design build outs. Uh, they're just a top notch machine and they have been since uh, the, the 1940s, really reaching way back to their inception. So it's exciting to introduce this machine, especially with it having been in my personal collection for so long. And uh, the fact that it served uh, in the setting of education to inspire young people, boys and girls alike, to get them excited about the idea of being a professional uh, seamstress and just having fun with these uh, amazing machines. And uh, this particular model you can see is a Ricker Model 2925. It's a one amp machine, so it's got more power than the Singer 201-2, more power than the Singer 1591, more power even than the recent, very recent uh, Viking uh, Model 10M that I just had on the workbench and we just premiered. So it's a nice muscular motor and you'll see that when we do the various sew-offs. But you know what? Like the intro showed, we first of all have to sit down and go to school. We first have to sit down and be a part of this classroom. So I'm going to introduce this instructor person that's going to read the first page uh, out of this manual. This is the actual, the original manual that was used uh, in the school district uh, for instruction to those who were teaching the young people about these really cool machines. So I'll let you follow along as our proctor is making us super smart on how we can best teach and inspire our students uh, in the classroom. So here we go. Are you ready, uh, Mr. Proctor? Uh, I, I'm assuming he is. Welcome to this special class. Dear Home Economist Instructor, you can be proud of your new sewing machine, an outstanding product of many years of research and development. The highest quality materials and functional design are combined in it to achieve perfect operating efficiency and years of dependable service. If you have ever admired the beautiful and intricate sewing of professional seamstresses, you will be amazed and delighted to learn that you can now do it yourself with this remarkable sewing machine. Hmm. Before attempting to sew, however, please read this instruction book carefully. If you follow these instructions and give your machine proper care, it will operate perfectly for many years. Should the machine fail to function correctly, stop sewing and review the manual before starting again. Time spent in learning the features, controls, and adjustments of your machine will eliminate errors and will result in complete satisfaction and enjoyment of your sewing skills. Thank you. Wow, that, that, was, that was something. I, I, I feel inspired to clap or something, don't don't you? You probably don't. All right, well, at any rate, our proctor is trying to make the point, and I've said this for years, that the instruction manual is really a critical extension and piece of having success with that sewing machine, regardless of what sewing machine it is. But they had to build that into the framework of this because this was gonna be used in an educational setting. This was gonna be used, as it shows on the front of here, assigned to a specific school district, and it was going to uh, be a source of instruction. It was gonna be a class. And I know it feels like it's still summer vacation, and in most places it is, but we're not gonna get a break. We're constant, vigilant learners, and we do that by continuing to immerse ourselves in the knowledge of sewing machines. Even one like this, which by 
the clearest definitions is probably not really pure vintage but it's got some really strong vintage roots having been introduced through home economic classes way back in the day and being an integral part of educating our young people and inspiring them many of whom went on to become tailors uh, seamstress seamstresses and the like so I'm selling it as vintage whether you like it or not and it's a really way cool machine oh and by the way did I mention that I'm offering it for sale so if you want a really super classic machine in your collection you're gonna to want to jump all over this and especially you're gonna to want to jump on it after you see this beautiful machine so and it really is a lovely machine it's got an incredible ebony finish on it uh, and it's just a real head turner in my opinion plus if you saw the photos on uh, Facebook and that it's also a free arm as well I'm gonna move my uh, stitching material to the side a little bit just show you easy to pull this puppy off and then just as easy to slide it back into place again and it's also got a hidden little compartment here as well where you can hide all of your goodies uh, your extra bobbins your oil uh, your needles you name it you can tuck them right in there and uh, take this machine to a sewing class take it to a quilting retreat wherever you want to go with it again it's a one amp motor it's going to be able to do some hardcore quilting heavy duty sewing or whatever you decide to put it uh, underneath the needle test with if you will so and you may have seen in the Facebook shots as well that I've already done uh, off camera some stitch offs with this machine it's got well really more than 13 built-in stitches but it's got 13 uh, decorative style stitches that you can easily uh, sew with this machine and if I zoom in on these a little bit you're gonna see just some absolutely drop-dead gorgeous uh, stitching and uh, you know whatever you're using the machine for whether you're just looking for a heavy-duty machine uh, or whether you're looking for something that can do decorative output as well this machine's gonna get the job done and if we go around the machine real quick uh, you can see uh, the control centers are pretty uh, straightforward this one on the bottom down here is going to be a reverse button it's also going to give you a uh, stitch length uh, this up here is going to give you a uh, stitch width and then this control over here is going to give you the uh, different uh, stitch output options uh, with just a simple click plus it's got some built-in buttonholes as well if that's of interest to you but as we look at the decorative stitches I'm going to kind of zoom way in here and we'll kind of just go down starting with stitch one stitch two three it's kind of interesting go from three to five not really good for instruction is it <laughs> here on uh, stitch five setting we can do straight stitching or basic zigzag continue down come on you silly camera And finally stitch 13 where you've got basically two different stitch outputs there as well and on the side I'm not going to demonstrate it in the video here's your uh, your balance wheel obviously but if you wind it want to wind a bobbin we always brag about the Husqvarna Viking uh, green machines and how simple they are to wind a bobbin because all you do is basically pop a bobbin onto that uh, bobbin winder and it automatically disengages the clutch well, you know what ricker being as pro progressive as they are and were uh, they don't want to be outdone so all you do is just pop this little door open and with that simple little action of rotating that door to the rear you now are in a position where you can pop that bobbin on the clutch is already disengaged it's already done just by rotating that little door open and then when you're done winding the bobbin you just rotate that door back forward again and as soon as you push on that foot control that clutch is going to automatically re-engage again that easy so I'm really impressed with you know their uh, their design and the ease of their design they wanted to make it as easy as possible for students in ho home economic classes to embrace the idea of sewing and eliminating all the obstacles was really the key to that 
So let me zoom in on the needle. I'm going to kind of go past these stitches a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of sewing on this machine. I think you're also going to be impressed. I know I was impressed with how quiet uh, this machine runs when you're doing various sew-offs, even heavier duty ones. So let me move this off to the side a little bit. And uh, I'll see if I can put a little bit of music on as we do some sew-offs. Let's see what we have here. Here's one. And this one is called uh, You Can't Fail. The, uh, the one that I opened up with before we discovered that we weren't still on summer break was called Upstairs with Cat. I'm not making that up. How could I? All right. All right, let's start with let's start with some leather. And I think I have it just on a straight stitch right now. Single layer of this elk skin. Here we go. Beautiful stitches. Nothing fancy about a little circle, folks. I get it. I'm just having fun. So there's our top stitch right there on this single layer of elk skin, and it's absolutely perfect uh, in every way. It's absolutely spectacular. And if I turn it over, same thing is true of that lock stitch. You can see it, I gotta pull it back, but that stitch is absolutely spot on when it comes to a single layer of this stuff. Let's, let's raise the ante a little bit, and I've got more of this elk skin here this elk hide, I should say. I'm gonna go ahead and do three layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over once, and I'm gonna fold it one more time over. I'm gonna press it down. Look at what we're going through here, folks. Three layers of this stuff. All right, let me hopefully get this into position. I hope I can. Did I bite off too much? I hope not. All right, press your foot is down. Let's see how this machine does. And let's not do a straight stitch on this. Let's go ahead and zigzag it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that setting over on the side and let's see how this machine does with this thickness of uh, genuine elk hide. Here we go. Did we just sew it? I, I can't even tell. Was it that easy? Apparently so. Beautiful stitching, absolutely drop dead beautiful. And that's three layers of genuine uh, elk uh, hide is the way I guess I'll refer to it. And it just rattled through that with this one amp motor like there was, I mean like basically like was a light cotton. Really impressive power uh, with this uh, Ricker model 2925. And not just uh, impressive as far as the power but the stitch output is absolutely spot on. Beautiful stitching on this machine, really impressed. So, I'd like to do a little bit more gunny sack sewing, and, and this time I'm gonna stick with that zigzag, so I'm not gonna put an outside layer of that polyester cotton on it. We're just gonna go after it and see how we do. So, you remember that we sewed this off on the other machine as well, so we're starting with two layers of this gunny sack material. I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half. We're up to four. I'm going to fold it one more time, and we're all the way up to eight layers of this gunny sack material. See if I can get that underneath the presser foot. This is going to be tight, folks. This is going to be really, really tight. Good gravy. But here's the good news about this ricker as well, is if you can see that by the presser foot, I've got a little bit of a cheat here when it comes to the hyperextension. One of the downfalls, and nothing against that beautiful uh, Viking 10M that I just premiered, 
but it doesn't have that presser foot clearance that this Ricker 2925 has and it didn't have that hyper extension so it really was kind of a battle and we wanted to do that eight layers of uh, heavy grade denim we couldn't do it the machine could have done it but it just didn't have the presser foot clearance here we've got the presser foot clearance to do eight layers of this gunny sack material and we've got room to spare if we wanted to so I'm going to zip down it with a zigzag here we go it just runs so absolutely smooth such a smooth running machine no wonder they designated it as the go-to machine uh, to try to inspire young students uh, to really want to use uh, a sewing machine it just it's effortless even going through eight layers of this gunny sack material it just does it like blah, done no problem at all the only problem with this gunny sack material is it really sheds a lot on my beautiful black finish ah but what are you going to do right it is what it is and if you can see that in the shot it's absolutely a gorgeous uh, zigzag in every way uh, the spacing the formation and again looking from the side what we just went through our lock stitch is just absolutely gorgeous as well so really impressed i gotta grab a, a quick uh, micro uh, type towel and wipe this off it's driving me bonkers this machine was absolutely pristine and clean and now it's all yucky there we go <laughs> what do they say if you have a black car it's going to look clean even if it's dirty uh, well that might work on cars but it's not working on sewing machines folks not at all so my final sew off that i'm going to do on this ricker model 2925 is going to be my u.s army grade canvas i just love this stuff starting with two layers I'm going to go ahead and fold it over. Uh, actually, I'll fold it over like this. Let's see, what do we have? Two, three, four. Yeah, we're up to four layers now. And if I give it one more fold, apparently my mathematics is not very good. And we're in a classroom setting right now. So I should be like crunching numbers masterfully. And I'm folding it one more time. And now we're up to eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. Again, if you see my one of my machines do this, and you're like, dang, that was easy. Kind of like the, isn't that the Office Max people, or one of those Office whatever they call them. They're always talking about, that was easy, and they're hitting their little button. You know what, it's easy with one of my machines, but you know, if you haven't had your machine go through my workshop, I don't highly recommend that you try this, seriously. All right, so instead of just doing a standard zigzag, why don't we raise the ante a little bit and let me see if I can lay down a decorative stitch on this, a little bit more decorative. I'm going to go to uh, stitch number 10. And you really can't see what I'm doing right now, which is not fair to you. So give me a second here. Let's widen this shot and you can see how easy it is to set this machine. Let's go over to the controls. Okay, I think that's a pretty good shot for you. I'm going to have to adjust it again as soon as I get done. So I said stitch number 10, right? I'm going to go ahead and change this. Did I go the wrong way? I don't think so. There we go. So I set that to 10. Our stitch width is already on 5. And our stitch length is also on 5 as well. And you have to be careful with these because when you're doing the stitches that are in red you've got to make sure that you're within the red setting. The stitch length in particular, uh, there's only one setting and on five, you got to have it on five. And then setting this on 10, setting this on somewhere between five and three. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on five for now. And we're going to zip down these eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas and see how this Ricker does with a task as difficult as this. Again, look at that on the end, folks. Come on. We're basically sewing uh, a telephone book is what we're doing. We'll come in nice and tight on this. There we go. All right, let me flip my screen around and we'll buzz down and see how this machine does with a task as difficult as this. And I've got to get my foot control lined up as well. All right, here we go.
All right, now I'm going to hold it steady finally after all of that effort. I kind of was kind of throttling it up and down there for a second instead of holding it steady, and I didn't want you to think, why isn't it going steady? So it's a problem with my, uh, apparently with my shoe. So this is uh, stitch number 10 that we just laid out on this uh, Ricker Model 2925. I really like this a lot. I kind of, I think I've referred to this before as kind of a catacomb type stitch. Again, probably not the technically correct term. I would say decidedly probably not the correct term. But folks, we just did this through eight layers of US Army grade canvas, a decorative stitch. Look at it from the side there. Look at it from the side over here. And getting through it is one thing, right? But to lay down a stitch as absolutely perfect as that with a lock stitch as absolutely perfect as this, it just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, that is brag worthy. That is absolutely brag worthy for this Ricker 2925 model. And uh, again, I'll say it again, no wonder they chose this machine out of any machine they could have to try to inspire young people that you know that they wanted to get enthused and excited about being in that home economics class dealing with what I refer to as a really cool power tool uh, a sewing machine and uh, and just being inspired by it, just finding it you know to really be a, a, a neat thing to do and as I lay these different sew offs off we as I lay these different sew offs maybe I'll do them in front of the machine that'll probably be easier as I put these out, I mean, I'm just really impressed with this machine. I really am. I'll have to put some of them up, some of them down. I didn't clip any of my threads. This is incredibly embarrassing. But whatever. It's summer vacation, right? Sort of. Almost. <laughs> I better put these underneath there. There we go. Okay. So let me zoom in on some of these. And if I didn't clip my threads, just ignore it. It's summer vacation, okay? All right. So these are the ones I did off camera again. Absolutely, in my opinion, spectacular stitches. Again, this has, if you count conservatively, 13 stitches that you can choose uh, to use on any project that you want. Here's our single layer of elk hide. And you might, have rem you might remember as I buzzed around doing that straight stitch, I mean, it just, was absolutely effortless for this machine to go through that close to four four ounces probably of elk hide. Uh, I mean, no light task. You take some of those machines from Walmart, again, no knock to Walmart, but man, oh man, you do that on some of these machines that they have at Walmart and you're gonna be, you're gonna be picking up pieces, folks. And here's our uh, gunny sack that we did. What did I say, eight layers, right? And we did a zigzag on it. And the zigzag is absolutely spectacular and spot on. You already saw the other side of it. The lock stitch looks just as good as that. Look at again from the side, eight layers of this gunny sack material. I mean, it's burlap, folks. Burlap is basically like sewing. It's like sewing steel wool. It really is. And then we did these eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. And you can go across here with this catacomb type stitch. Um, and it's just absolutely spectacular. Again, don't try it on your machine at home and then contact me and say, I'm sending you my broken machine. You've been warned, folks. You've been warned. <laughs> and here we've got that, uh, what did I say? Four, three layers. Three layers of this elk hide uh, where we did a zigzag on it. And it, it was effortless. This machine just went down it and it was like no problem at all. And you can just see the, the texture and the grain and the um, just the ruggedness of this hide. You know what? It's not an easy task, folks. And if you look at these again, just an absolutely spectacular job uh, on the part of this Ricker uh, in laying down a stitch that, in my opinion, again, is brag worthy. And if you're not looking for heavy duty, here we go again with some of these decorative stitches that are absolutely drop-dead gorgeous on this machine. They're just absolutely spectacular. 
So what can I say? It might be summer vacation, but it's a lot of fun to come to this classroom and just see how incredible this machine must have been back in the day when it was introduced in those schools across our nation. And again, Ricker, when you go into some of the uh, years of development and production, when this machine was being rolled out and machines like it were being rolled out, they were being rolled out in England then. So while it has some, some Japanese roots earlier on, production eventually moved over to England with these Rickers. And English people are just real persnickety in particular when it comes to anything that they put their name on. And so this is a great machine. It's rugged, it's well-designed, it's progressive. And whether you're looking for heavy duty or decorative, it doesn't matter. This Ricker uh, model 2925, I had to cheat and look, is gonna get the job done. And again, it's one of these machines that's been in my personal collection, which tells you right away, it's an original owner machine. It came from that gentleman that used, in his, in his, used it as an instructor in his home economics class out in New York, and then turned around and sold it to me so I know the history of this machine like the back of my hand. And I've got to end, now that we're done with this class, we're done with this official class, we got to end by announcing again for any of you kids out there, because we have viewers on this channel that follow this YouTube channel faithfully that are as young as in their early teens. We got to end with reminding everybody, hey, hold on a second now, it's still, summer vacation. It's kind of mild for summer vacation. How about this? All right, back to school, kids. Summer vacation's over. Come on, it's over. Get back to school. All right, I gotta stop the music. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless you. Hey, I thought the music was gonna stop. All right, one more loop around.